excited <laughs> still. Uh, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, I'm telling you, the more I see the movie, the more I get things which I didn't realize up to now about it. You know, like at 73, you look back in, at the decisions that you made in your life, and I, by watching the movie, I see really three monumental decisions that if I didn't make it that way, maybe, you know, I, maybe I couldn't sleep well at night, and I would always forget it. The first, that really taking that path, Billy Walton went to the NBA, I went to Israel, and making that decision, uh, you know, not going back or not, you know, with the Baltimore Bullets or the Washington Wizards, and taking that decision to go to Israel, uh, staying in Israel. You know, every year when the NBA All-Star Weekends, they ask me, all our guys are Billy Cunningham, Rick Barry, uh, Bill Bradley, uh, Gail Goodridge, all these guys are up over 70, so they forget they ask me. The same question every year. <laughs> you know, if you're the 12th, 13th player in the draft today, uh, you're signing for over $2 million, $2.7 million a year, two years no cut, it opens up after the third year. But Billy Cunningham, who was in Israel last month, and we were talking about it, I said, Billy, remind me of the contract that you signed with the Philadelphia 76ers in the first year? Of course, $7,500 a year. <laughs> so it wasn't a uh, financial thing. The second monumental decision, after my first year in Israel, the NBA wasn't attractive to me. I mean, they always wanted to dream about it as a kid. But after my second year, I had such an unbelievable time seeing the meaning of going to Israel when our team played in East Europe. I saw what it meant to the Jews in East Europe when the team from Israel would come in and be in Bulgaria, Romania, unbelievable. And then I saw in West Europe, uh, Belgium, uh, going to France, going to Germany. You know, not that anti-Semitism is any less today than it was at that time, but I saw what it meant to the Jews in those countries. The Israeli team is coming in and making those Jews feel proud that we can win in those countries. And I decided to come back for a second year. And after my second year, I wanted to make Aliyah to Israel. I enjoyed the social life. I enjoyed the cultural life, the life in the cafes, with the friends, the beaches. And then I got my draft notice at the time of Vietnam. I got my draft notice. And I didn't think twice because I said my education's in the States, my friends are in the States, my family's in the States. And went back. Uh, after basic training, after advanced infantry training in Fort Polk, Louisiana, everybody was getting shipped out to Oakland. All of a sudden, I get notice from the State Department that I have to go out to the Presidio of San Francisco and you know join the All Army basketball team, uh, and then the United States team, and then the, the U.S. Army team, Army, Navy, Marines, and Air Force. From Fort Polk, Louisiana, in the swamps, and all of a sudden, the Presidio of San Francisco. Uh, unbelievable. And so I was fortunate, but the fact that I made that decision that, yes, uh, I was called up to the American Army, they, they started to draft academics and went back. You know, I don't think if I would have if I stayed in Israel and I didn't go back, I don't know, you know if I could sleep at night or for sure I wouldn't really, would have read it. The book. And the third, I went to Israel to take up that challenge. And that challenge was just one week away, and all of a sudden my dad really has that heart attack and intensive care. And I think that if I didn't go back, even winning the European Championship, that's something, again, today, I would always have regretted that I would, if I didn't go back. And I really feel proud of myself that I did make those monumental decisions at that period of time in my life. So that's why I would like to ask uh, Danny Becky, what inspired you to do this film? I mean, how can you how did you get involved in that? I mean, oh. So thank you. <laughs> so this, well, there were many elements to making this film. Uh, at first, you know, uh, Nancy knows because we joined forces in making it to the American audience. So for us, it was really important because so many people knew about the miracle on ice that suddenly people will also know about the miracle on hardwood. That for us, it's much bigger than the miracle on ice. 
And it, it's really one of my first childhood memories. I'm very happy and fortunate to have my dad here and my mom. <laughs> and they remember yet. And my wife didn't hear she went outside and I mentioned the anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, she don't buy it for everything. <laughs> so, uh, so it, it, something that you know for us was like like for the Americans, the first men walked on the moon. When this gentleman said we are on the map, that's how we really felt. And because I came from the sport world and I started to make films not only about sport, it was important that the movie, and that's where also Nancy and Robert and all the team joined forces and helped, will not only be about sport, it will be larger than that. And we were very lucky to have and the team being kind of what I call the fourth scum of Israel history. <laughs> Everything happened that moment. Everything happened that year. And that's why, that's why it was one day, that one moment that for us defined everything. And I'm very happy we captured in, 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 in the movie. Okay, how did you get involved in that? How did we get involved? Um, Danny actually had contacted me and Roberta after Above and Beyond came out. Roberta and I had done that film first. And uh, he recognized that the film needed to stretch it, you know, its wings and fly and, and be a part of a, a bigger picture. And um, what we tried to do was Americanize the movie a little bit so that it would mean as much to another audience that it, that it does to the Israeli audiences. And this is an incredible audience, because the cheering, you know, and you guys, a lot of you know what the results of the game were, and you're still cheering as <laughs> you did. Which people that actually commented to me, you know, Israelis, people say, I knew, I know this story in history, but I'm still sitting at the edge of my seat, my hands are still sweaty, you know, waiting for that victory. Um, and I really wanted to take film, like Above and Beyond, where Americans and Israelis joined together to achieve something great. And I think this is one of those uh, films. That's the theme that I love. You know, I have to really give the Danny and Nancy credit, because you have to remember, television, when I went to Israel in 66, there wasn't any television until after the Six Days War. And then it was black and white. As you saw, there's a mixture of black and white. And where Danny found all these parts in the movie, there's things that I haven't seen. You know, that, that, was, that was it, but I never saw. You know, and to realize when I think, again, about when I first went to Israel, you have to remember, I, I came from the University of Illinois, the Big Ten Conference, we beat UCLA 110-83. Miguel <laughs> Boobers was there. And assembly hall, over 16,000 people a game. The best hardwood, best conditions and, that you can have as an athlete, private plane flying around the Big Ten Conference all over. And I'm thinking, when I, every time I watch this movie, I'm, I'm looking at the courts. When I went to Israel, you know, those that know where Shum Patzalel is, uh, you, know, oh my God, you know, this was the court that I came from the University of Illinois and landed and played on, outdoors. And you have to remember, Jerusalem, the winter is the same winter as uh, 40 years ago, and we played outdoors. Uh, going up to Kiryat Chaim in Haifa, uh, we got rained out. We didn't have internet and Facebook and all that uh, 40, uh, 50 years ago. So I, I wrote back to our guys, would you believe we got rained out in a basketball game? <laughs> <laughs> the world was leaking. They couldn't imagine you get rained out in a basketball game. And then to go to the kibbutz near the feedback alpha, and all of a sudden, a, a dust storm, a sandstorm, and you're playing with sand in your eyes and how to shoot the ball. So the conditions, you know, were not the same as in the United States, but the, going to Israel is set as a challenge, and you feel you got a goal, and that's it. Kept my mouth shut and tried to do the best I can to make that change.